Hi guys and welcome back. I have another room transformation video. I'm standing in it and it's all finished and it has just come together so well. I'm really sorry that it's been quite a while since my previous one. But I want to say though a massive thank you. That video was so well received. It really blew me away and it just makes me happy that people love seeing me giving things a go. Um, I've learned even more things in this room from wallpaper to plumbing to loads about hinges which you'll learn too if you keep on watching. And without further ado, I'm rambling far too much. Um, I hope you enjoy. Here are some befores the day that we moved in. I ran around the house with my camera and filmed. The next clip is me trying to find something nice about the room. I quite like the um, the wood. Here are a couple of photos. I kept the sink knowing we could probably upcycle it and I got this amazing swan tap which required three holes so that sink was perfect. Using a steamer I removed all of the wallpaper which was quite quick in a small room, filled any holes and then sanded the walls smooth. I then decided to frame out the window using some architrave like so. What the problem is, is this wall here is so wonky. So what I did was I did a pilot hole through the wood, through into the wall, used a wall plug and then screwed in the screw. I don't have a countersink bit so what I did was just get a larger drill bit and widen the hole so then the screw would sit in so I can then fill over the top. Cork all along the edges, fill, sand and it's ready for priming. I ended up using three whole tubes of cork in this room, filling all the gaps in the walls and the panelling and the ceiling. I then even did the floor. So this part I haven't bothered doing because it's going to have cupboards built in. But look at the difference. For the primer I did all the cutting in first, then roll it on for the walls and for the panelling. When priming a door, here are some tips. Step one, paint inside the frames and use a roller to finish doing that part. Then roll it down the middle of the door, do all your horizontals and finally the sides. So this is just polystyrene coving, really easy to use. So it comes in strips, then with a mitre box and a handsaw, you just saw it. Just have to make sure you use the right adhesive. This is usually right by the polystyrene coving. And I just use, this is an old boots card to scoop it up it along the sides and then stick it up. You'll have to remove any excess and then cork any gaps. Prime and you're ready to paint. So last year I think the last thing I filmed was priming the ceiling but this is how it looks. I'm flipping you around. This is the other side. Been watching a ton of YouTube videos about wallpapering. You need to think about where you're going to start because where you start is obviously where you're going to finish. I thought the best place to start and stop is above the door because this is the smallest amount and no one's really going to look up. A helpful tip, measure the width of your wallpaper around the room so you know you'll have enough to go around your corners, around trouble areas like windows and doors. Using a ready-made paste, I pasted the back of the wallpaper, moving it to the sides of the table. This way I could get right to the edges without making a mess. Then fold up the wallpaper and let it soak for eight minutes and you're ready to go. I really should have painted all of the panelling first, shouldn't I? It's going on a lot easier than I thought, but it's the corners which are really tricky. That's the best corner I've done. It's just when you go round, you have to splice it and then do a plumb line. And then when I put the second piece, I'll be lining it up along here. Challenge is lining up some form of pattern. That corner looks insane. Mm -hmm. I cut like around the leaves of separate pieces there and there and I think that helps hide it to the eye. I'm so happy it's done. It actually looks pretty good. New light is in. So that's ready. So Daniel's coming around today and this is going to be transformed. So the ceiling and the coving is all going to be gilded. We will then do a template, work out the size I want the counter because he's going to do a marble effect the same as the sink. He's now mixing up the glue with some paint so you can see where he's adding it. The first bit. Oh, it's not going to go up to the crack. <laughs> that's okay. It's not straight. It's not coming down. <laughs> This is my awful attempt at doing these two bits, but this is Daniel, the professional at work. This is how it should be done. This is what I do to keep the camera really still. Like Just use your face. Yeah. And now my job is to go around with a brush and some more of the gold leaf and make sure it's all in little grooves. 
And then I put on these white gloves and I burnish it in, which he's done in this section so you can see what it will look like. If I sit on the floor, we can get a better angle of the ceiling. It's so shiny, it's so pretty. I don't know the heights, I've got two. Do you think the lowest one around there? But yeah, you can see when I put this here, well I say you can see. Say the shelf is there, it now makes the ceiling look dark. I gild the top, that'll keep the ceiling nice and light, in theory. Thanks to YouTube, I learned how to do a scribing cut. This is when you need to join a piece. I didn't want to cut into this. Um, I just went to home base and it was the exact same skirting. I've seen the wallpaper and the light. Those are both from Dun Elm. I'm working with them for my Instagram, but this is just extra organic content. I'm gonna use their new eggshell paint. So these are samples. So I've got Raven, this one is just black. I've got Bottle Green and this one is Peacock. Drum roll, I went for Raven, which actually does look a bit bluey. We'll see what it looks like when it's painted. Don't ask. <laughs> That's good. So all I need to do first is just do all the cutting in. Doing along here, oh my god, definitely paint the wallpaper. So I've done the first coat of the cutting in. I did go a bit crazy with the brush. And then I've got Daniel around and he's just brought the counter to see what the fit is like. Starting to do the frame and then we can put the doors on. This is just leftover bits of wood from when we took the wardrobe out in the bedroom. So I'm glad I kept those. Width of 43.7. There was a left height 64.5 and a right height of 65. Using the combination square set to 2.5 inches. I marked where I wanted my mouldings. I then cut those down to size, checked they fitted first, then I glued them in place using no more nails. The hinges will sit under like where the rail ends, so there and there. So let's talk about hinges. Originally I got these butt hinges. You'd have to chisel out some of the wood so that this would sit flush. Because I'm using MDF, I can't do that. Thanks to YouTube, covered flush hinges. And the main thing with this is your screws have to sit flush, otherwise it will not close properly. I did myself a test piece. This is the opening. Oh, obviously your door won't do that. I've only done one side. Once the glue was dried, I was able to cork. I marked where I wanted the hinges and installed those on the door. I offered it up to the frame. I then marked and installed them there. I marked where I wanted the handle and did that. I primed everything. I then did two coats of paint. I did the second coat of paint on the panelling. When everything was dry, I installed the doors. They are all done and it looks amazing. Just use tape at the moment to keep them closed. Once the counter is on, underneath it I can install some magnetic closures and then that will hold it shut. I think I've made the perfect pink to match up with the light shade on the wallpaper, which is what I want to paint the door. I just used paints I already had, so these are the Frenchique chalk paints. I thought it was a good idea to make it in a tin in case I ever need to do touch-ups. All down the side of the architrave, that's all painted. Um, I fixed the door handle so that's on nice and straight. This was just with gold spray paint. What a transformation from what it was. So Daniel's on the way with the works up in sync. He showed me some pictures and I'm really excited. So before, I think I better put up the mirror. That'll be easy to put up now before we put this in. In goes the counter and the reason why he's wearing a hat, he has a camera there. Look how cool this footage is. Now let me show the mock-up. I don't think I've shared this yet in the video, but my design concept is the gold ceiling dripping down. So more glue was added along the wall and into the sink. The sink had special treatment. This is real gold leaf, so it will not tarnish. The wall is the same as the ceiling. That is imitation brass leaf, which still looks amazing. I installed the shelves on the opposite wall. And definitely such a good idea. Can you see how light underneath here is? So, because I've gilded the top of this one, it's kept the ceiling there nice and light. This looks amazing. So I'm in the process of actually installing the waste. So this isn't plumbed in, I've just put it here to see what it looks like. I've just unscrewed the top. So this is one of those uh, push waste for your basin. This tap 
<laughs> it's amazing, it's so extra. It's kind of annoying though that you only really appreciate it from the side, especially it's such a small room. You only see it from the front. So Daniel's done an amazing job. So this is enamel paint on the sink. This is a sink that was already in there that we've recycled. This is MDF. He's done this in his normal way of like painting with resin. And then he used a matte top coat. So it looks more like stone. He said it's very durable. It's like floor grade. What I also have done is I've installed the magnetic closures. I just got these off, I think it was Amazon or eBay. I'll link to them perfectly in line. Those are in line. Um, if you look under here, I just need to sand some of the drips off. He just didn't have time to do that. That's like on my snag list of things to do. Towel rail is in. Floor is all painted, just went for a nice white. The brass door stop is in, so the door doesn't smash into my lovely cabinets. And inside, this is now a working tap because I've plumbed it all by myself. I am bloody proud. So the reason for the tissue is to check for any leaks, but it's all fine now, so I can remove it. So there originally is the um, copper pipes and the isolation valves. I then had flexi tap connectors. So female end goes into the tap, male end goes there. Um, hence, I added some more copper piping. It didn't look like this, it was perfect. Then I realized this is actually the cold tap. Um, I just expected the hot tap to be on this side and it wasn't. So I've had to just kind of change things around a bit. But look, it works. Oh my God. Oh my God. Didn't like that you could see the back of the radiator. So I made this. This is a snuff cut of wood from when we moved the wardrobe. Can you remember that when Paul broke the window when we removed that? Oh dear God. Uh, and then I just painted it the same color. The toilet is in. So this was a brand new toilet I got on Facebook Marketplace, so I just got the wrong one and I saved like 80 quid. It's all installed, plumbed in, spray painted the handle, gold, some off cuts of wood underneath to make that level. More flexi tap connectors off cut of um, pipe that I had that had a bend in, so it worked. It's quite like a short distance. I'm so happy it's done. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you ready to see all of the afters? I've done all the befores and all the after angles to match. Everything is styled and now ready to share with you from that sad little window. It now has its own purpose and it looks so pretty. The ceiling is its own statement and every aspect, every corner has just so much going on and I love it. This room is absolutely crazy and I love that I have this design element of the ceiling dripping down the wall and now it's here, it's happening, it's amazing. And I'm so proud of that cupboard, it really needed a cupboard. And that poor ugly sink now has a new lease of life. Thought I would give you a little overview of the tiniest room in the house, now it is all done. First thing you see are these floating shelves and I painted them in the same color as all of the paneling so it ties everything together. At the very top, I gilded them. The ceiling above would remain nice and bright and gold. For the styling, I've stuck roughly to the rule of three. Three grouped together there and there and then one, balanced off with one down here and then three and three. I'm so happy with the panelling. I'm glad I kept it and painted it. I made my little radiator shelf. I'm thinking of just adding the toilet rolls there. I do have a toilet roll holder, but I don't know if I want to add it to the wall and just kind of add extra busyness. It might just be simpler if I keep it there. The gold spray paint on the handle worked really well. I'm actually impressed with that. The wallpaper is so perfect for this space. I love that the background pink of it isn't too dark. I matched the window and door by just mixing some paints I had together to create this light pink shade and the architrave around the window really gives it more of a purpose. Oh, not to forget my little spray paint handle. Again, I'm tying all of the brass gold tones. From my design, I knew I wanted to have this beautiful gilded ceiling. So this light is from Dunelm. I knew I wanted something brass and it couldn't be too low because of the height of the door. The coving, I'm very glad I added that. That really just finishes off the room and gives it even more grandeur with this gold. And the gold drips down past the mirror and it drips onto the counter and then into the sink. I bought this swan tap and I knew it had three holes so it was just easier keeping this sink rather than trying to source another with three holes basically. And yeah, the drip goes down and into the plug hole. The waste I got from eBay. 
it's one of these pop-up ones nice and simple then I don't have to have like a chain and the plug just hanging around I wanted to keep it quite simple because I mean I asked Daniel if he could paint this for me and he pulled this off he'd never done it before and it worked perfectly the hinges were just from Wilco these are left over moldings from when I did the bedroom those were from Wix handles are from Wilco skirting was from home base if I pan down and then compare this so the mock-up I made at the very beginning, it looks so close to it, I'm, I'm blown away. And moving around to the last wall, because this really is the tiniest room ever, the door, you can see the colour a bit better now. Light switch, this is from b and I wasn't sure originally whether to have the hand towel holder here so there it really ties in a lot more. The hand towel I think is just from George Asda, I added it because it really matches the pink. The brass rim lock is from eBay. Oh, it just looks so much better than the one we had before. It wasn't original and it, this just looks lovely and fancy. I wish the keys were gold as well. And then the last thing is this little doorstop which is so functional. I managed to find a nice looking brass one because if I open the door this stops it going and smashing into the worktop. What about that? I hope you enjoyed this room transformation. I am so happy with it. I had so much fun doing it. I can't believe from my initial mock-up ideas how well and close does it look to the final outcome, but if not better. And I've learned so many skills from the tiniest room in the house. Like, I'm so glad I wallpapered. I was really worried it would be difficult, but it was far more straightforward than I imagined. Also corners, if you do have quite a patterned wallpaper, then maybe do get a professional in. If you just have a simple wall, then you can definitely give it a go. Like when I posted on my Instagram stories, I had so many women message me being like, I have wallpaper sat around the house, I'm gonna get it done this weekend. Like I really hope I inspire people with my YouTube videos as well, that you can definitely give things a go. You can learn so much from YouTube, whether you're doing stuff yourself with help of friends and family. Like a massive thank you to Daniel again, helping me in this room. You may recognize him from the mural in my bedroom. He has really pulled out the stops in here. This room is quite out there compared to the rest of the house. Um, I love it and if you're gonna go crazy anywhere then why not in the tiniest room whether it's a utility powder or just like a cupboard just have some fun use that crazy wallpaper and just give things a go if you love all this kind of home content from me definitely follow me on my home account it's Leanne for home I'm a lot more active on there I'm so sorry I don't do as many YouTube videos as I did but we do still have lots of rooms in the house that we need to do up so keep an eye out for those in the comments please let me know what was your favorite part of this room I think for me it's the whole view of ugh, the sink the tap the gilding the counter like that just is so extra and I know it's not gonna be to everyone's taste and people probably will think that my tap is tacky but I don't care um but yeah please comment like and subscribe thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye